Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The SSR is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video let's check out some highlights for February 23. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video I already covered the best free new assets, and the next one I'll cover top visuals and effects. As always there's links to the assets in the description, and as a bonus you can use the coupon CodeMonkey10 to get 10% off your order. Speaking of free, is something that I'm guessing all of you are already familiar with. I recently launched my 10 hour free course. I'm really happy with the result and the reception has been literally 100% positive, I don't think I saw a single negative comment, and the plan of asking you to like the video to make it go viral on the YouTube algorithm, that plan worked. Right now the video has 200k views which is 10 times more than the normal amount. So thank you all so much, I truly hope the course has helped you on your own game dev journey, and a special thank you to the people that did buy the completely optional paid course, or did a super thanks or became a channel member, thanks to you I did manage to break even on the money that I spent on the assets, so thank you. Also free right now, the SSR is giving away an asset, apparently it's a new one every week, so you just go into the link and use the coupon to get it completely for free. There's also a sale on new and trending assets, so if there's something you saw recently in one of these asset list videos, it might be discounted. Alright, so starting off with a nice tool to add notes to your game, it's very freeform, you can have an empty board where you can place notes anywhere you want, you can add some text, add some images, a bunch of arrows, and you can even add a bunch of interactive elements, like some checkboxes, positions, colors, and so on. The main thing is that it's all freeform, so you have plenty of space for all of your designs. There's a bunch of websites that do this kind of note-taking thing, but if you want one directly inside Unity, then this tool looks great. They also have a free version if you want to try it out first. Up next, here's an interesting one, it's a climbing system. System. This is actually a topic that I've done some research to make a tutorial, but haven't quite managed to do it yet. It can definitely be quite tricky to get it working right. Handling the climbing positions, the climbing logic, all of that can be quite tricky, so using a pre-made asset can definitely save you a ton of time. And of course, this works great on both moving meshes, so something like a boss, but also on some static meshes just for adding some climbing somewhere in your game. The description says that very few games feature mechanics kind of like this one, and yep, that is right, so by adding this to your game, you're definitely helping it stand out. Then here's a gorgeous one, all about making some very unique books. It looks really insanely good. Like I've mentioned many times, if you want to find success nowadays you need to stand out in some way, and adding such a unique visual to your game would definitely make it stand out. You can flip pages in a very satisfying way, go forwards or backwards, you can place models on the pages and they track along with that page. It works on all the render pipelines, and it also uses bursts and jobs to make it insanely performant. So in all, a very interesting tool if you want to get a very unique visual. Up next, here's a tool for generating music. I must say that for me, sound design is one of the parts of game development that I know least about. I normally just play one song on loop and that's it, but obviously using something a bit more dynamic always yields better results. So this one is a tool where you can choose a genre and a mood, and then it generates a unique song. So with this, you could add tons of unique music to your game without having to spend thousands on buying individual tracks or hiring a musician. You can make every level or every scene have a unique track. The interface looks pretty easy to use, and the result in the video does sound really good. So if that's representative of the quality of everything this generates, and that is definitely good news. Next, here we have a grid builder tool. As you know, I have my really detailed series on making a grid system. If you want to build your own, you can follow those videos, or check out my turn-based strategy course for a more guided path, but if all you want is just a tool you can simply use, then this one does look great. It has lots of features, supports both 2D and 3D, you can place objects from an overhead view or down on the ground, it supports vertical grids, everything with a customizable size and visual, there's a custom inspector to help you create whatever grid you want and set up all the settings. So if you all you want is just a grid system that is ready to use, instead of building your own, then this one looks great. Up next, here is a nice UI for handling game options and settings. This is one of those things that nobody covers in tutorials, because it's not really a sexy part of game development, but it is something you must have in your final game. My massive free 10 hour course is probably one of the very few YouTube videos that does cover this, and even then, what I do in that course is a very simple options menu, so having an asset like this one, which contains a very complete options menu, this is definitely a great way to speed up your projects and make them look quite a bit more professional. Especially useful if you do lots of prototypes and game jams. For those games, people usually don't bother spending time to make some options, but if you can just drag and drop this, then it can definitely be a very nice bonus. Then if you have some flexible objects in your game, like maybe some hair or some cloth, then look at this tool. It does exactly what you expect. You can set up some bone parts and automatically react to physics. Apparently this one is a lot more performant than some other tools, so if you need this kind of thing on tons of characters, then maybe that can be a huge advantage. It has an extremely detailed documentation with lots of samples and guides, and also works well on top of any animation or really any motion system. Or maybe you're more interested in 2D, if so here is a nice procedural landscape tool. You have tons of parameters you can play around with, 
It's generated, which means you can make some infinite levels. You can use it to build a background or make the actual playable area. Looking at the shape of the hills, it reminds me of an awesome game that I used to play as a kid. It was called Elastomania. I played that for hours on end, it was really awesome. And with this tool, it would be great to get a quick prototype like that up and running quickly. There's also a web demo you can try out. Next, here's a really interesting one. You can add some custom gizmos to your game. One very important thing is these are not just editor gizmos, they are visible and usable in-game. Another important thing is how they can rotate so if your character is on a hill, you can see the gizmo attached correctly. So with that, this is definitely a very useful debugging tool. You can make it show the character velocity, add some handles to move some objects, visualize some ray casts, some line casts, and a bunch of things. You can easily draw cubes or any other mesh shapes. So tons of options, and on top of that, visually, it also looks great with lots of visual options. Then one thing that all games need is the ability to gather feedback. You always have access to forums or emails or something like that, but making it easy for the player to give you feedback is very important, and it will definitely increase the chance of you getting that super valuable feedback. So for that, a tool like this can be hugely helpful. You can easily add this window onto your game, then the player can write whatever text they want and even include several screenshots. They can draw on top to easily identify exactly what is going wrong. By the way, if you want to learn how to draw something on top, I have a tutorial on that subject. It also reports system data, and in the end, the entire report is visible directly inside Unity Cloud Diagnostics, so you don't even need to handle hosting yourself. All right, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on the Unity App Store for February 23. There's Links from the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Also, check out my own free and paid apps on the store. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.